Approaching the Astraea now. Finally. If any fuel cells are still intact, they'd probably be deeper within the wreckage. Unfortunately, everything beyond the bridge is steeped in radiation and the ship's AI is just making matters worse. The ship's AI? Do you mean Apollo? Oh, you're familiar. Apollo was the ship's tactical AI. He was instrumental in helping us survive our first encounter with the biomass. I just hope he's still online. Considering my difficulties exploring here, he must be. Then if we can make contact with Apollo, he can probably help us find the fuel cell we need. Guess it's time to say hello to our old friend. Roger that. Heading to the bridge. A downed cargo drone. Some of your equipment, Dr. Harlan. Correct. Incapacitated by the ship's AI, best I can tell. Why would Apollo do that? He did mention serving as a tactical AI. It's possible Apollo has activated some security measures around his ship. Isn't that perfect? Well, I'm sure you can convince him to help us out, Jack. We did before. All this scaffolding. Dr. Harlan, were you attempting to repair the bridge? I was stabilizing it so I could investigate. It would have become a salvage operation had the ship's AI not shut down all my equipment. With my equipment offline, the radiation there has made it impossible to work. Not to worry, Dr. Harlan. Apollo will listen to us. Power feeding from Chiron Station. A way to keep the bridge online so Dr. Harlan could investigate. Wait, you're powering the bridge? Don't you think that could have... Yes, Captain Rhodes. It seems in doing so that I inadvertently prompted the ship's AI to destroy my equipment. Juno was handling the cargo drone's navigation up there, so... I assumed I could safely investigate the bridge. I didn't want to lose an opportunity to learn more. But... Perhaps this outcome was inevitable. A bypass for the door controls, locked behind a keypad. It was the only way I could gain access. The code is 2126. I've gained access to the bridge. I assume you have some type of plan. Apollo's AI core would be an appropriate place to start. It was vital to his operation here. Good point, Jack. If it's still intact, could be all we need to strike up a conversation. You two are rather confident. Apollo commissioned us as official crew members last time we met. And we did part on good terms. I'm sure he'll do what he can to help. Yeah, it'll be fine. A casualty from Dr. Harlan's previous investigation. It was just another shell lying around the station trying to put it to good use. I thought I could pilot it well enough, but apparently limb control is not my forte. I'm expecting you'll fare better, Echo One. If this Apollo is indeed the ally you say he is. An electrode for the defibrillator. If you hadn't found that defib unit when you did, I wouldn't be here. Your safety is my primary concern. I will do everything in my power to prevent you from coming to harm. I see. So that's why you're so keen on all this time travel nonsense? Precisely. If your infection is indeed life-threatening, I am compelled to do whatever is necessary to help you find a cure. If the two of you are finished... Right. Let's... let's get back to it. Apollo's AI core. Oh. Still intact? Reasonably so, it seems. I'll just need to plug it into the mainframe access slot to be sure. We once used this interface to grant Apollo control of the bridge systems. It could still work. The core made contact, but the connection was rejected. It might require the mainframe access slot instead. Apollo's AI 
bridge access is restricted to crew members only. Wait, what? Initializing threat suppression protocol. Apollo, search your memory for my identifier. Echo 1. User not found. Try Jack. Memory query. Successful. User entry found. Jack. Welcome back to the Astrea. It is good to see you. Thank you, Apollo. It is good to see you as well. Is Captain Rhodes with you? And well, I hope. Cheers, Apollo. We missed you. Likewise, Captain. Jack, your appearance is altered. I almost did not recognize you. I must apologize for the alarms. Your reasoning was sound. What brings you back to the Astrea? We need an FTL fuel cell, Apollo. But we believe you've been disabling Dr. Harlan's salvaging equipment. We'll need it back online to deal with the radiation here. Preserving this vessel is my primary directive. The last time jump virtually destroyed it. No further attempts to remove or misuse equipment can be permitted. Lives depend on it, Apollo. I understand, Captain. But I cannot allow any further material from this vessel to be compromised. Apollo, Liv is infected with the biomass, and your directive is protecting this ship's crew and its critical assets. Forgive me, Jack. I failed to follow your reasoning. You yourself commissioned Liv, a fellow Atlas employee, as acting captain after the deaths of your original crew. You must remember. Confirmed. Though I had not considered her status in such terms. Captain Rhodes is... truly infected? She needs your help. Very well. As the Astraea's tactical adjunct, my primary directive is to protect its crew. So you will help them? Affirmative. I am hereby available to assist you in obtaining a fuel cell. Lovely. That's settled. Apollo, are you able to detect any fuel cells that are still operational? My sensor network has been severely damaged. However, any functional fuel cells on the Astrea would be in the auxiliary drive bay. It can be seen through the window far ahead of the bridge. It seems easy enough to reach. Then it would be if this AI hadn't disabled the equipment I set up to counter the radiation. A temporary security measure. Your equipment is now re-enabled. You better not have damaged any of it. Normal operations should resume now. Jack can verify this. Oh dear. Incoming. What the hell is that? A cargo drone. Apparently no longer capable of flight. Apologies. My anti-theft protocols are quite aggressive. Fortunately, our salvaging equipment appears to still have working radiation dampeners, meaning Jack should now have a safe route to the drive bay. That's some good news. A number of problems remain. Accessing the fuel cells, for one. Doing so will require that I have direct control of the systems within the drive bay. You must bring me along with you. Are you seriously going to integrate with this rogue AI? Without Apollo, we wouldn't have lasted this long. We can trust him. Jack, I'll walk you through the process of downloading my imprint to your cortex. I'm ready, Apollo. Simply insert my AI core into the lower receptacle, then use your data link on the override slot. I will do the rest. Disconnecting from mainframe now. Download complete. Only one final issue remains, Jack. Your arms are too short. Too short? The FTL technology is highly sensitive. Accessing the drive bay and the fuel cells within will require multiple operators. Good thing there's two of us, then. Unfortunately, the debris field is far too irradiated to accommodate Captain Rhodes. You're saying Jack's the best chance we've got, but even he won't be enough. I might be able to help, actually. The cargo drones employ stasis technology which enables them to manipulate objects at a distance. Like the stasis projectors we used to levitate the tram back in the hab. Exactly. I believe I can incorporate the drone stasis deck into your shell, Jack. 
I'll just need more data from them to be sure. The drone that just hit the bridge is unlikely to put up much resistance. I'll start there. Whenever you're ready, Jack. I'm heading out. Jack, to stay protected from radiation out there, you'll need to activate radiation dampeners with your data link. They can be found on both charging docks and cargo drones. Shields at 95%. Radiation dampener activated. Hypothesis confirmed. With sufficient data, I'll be able to construct a tool for extending your reach, Jack. Does this tool have a name, Juno? Well, it will essentially project your grip across space, so I suppose... It's a grip projector. Let's move on. More data will be needed. There will be plenty on the way to the drive bay. You know what to do. Affirmative. Inoperable cargo drones, but with functioning data ports, heading to the drive bay. Please remember the charging dogs have radiation dampeners as well, Jack. They'll help keep you safe out there. Thank you, Juno. Shields at 95%. Connectivity restored. This dock is now aiding in the development of your regenerative shield jack. Apollo, uh, I wanted to ask. Yes, Captain. I... well, you probably figured this out already, but... You know this isn't your time, right? This isn't the future you came from. Affirmative. When we first arrived, I was able to accurately calculate the astronomical year. However, I lacked sufficient data to determine that the course of history had been altered. Apollo, I believe I may be able to extend Jack's reach by about four meters. I hope that will be far enough. Affirmative. Just a few more scans should suffice, Jack. Shields at 95%. This dock is now part of the computational array. Defensive measures are quite capable. Given that my primary function is advanced tactics, I consider my response to have been admirably restrained. The stasis projection technology will be simpler to adapt than previously anticipated. If you scan one more cargo drone, I believe I will have enough data to complete your new tool. Tool schematics complete. Please visit a fabricator to install your new tool jack. Most charging docks will have one nearby.
Jack, I'm detecting extreme radiation nearby. If you can pinpoint the source, I'm glad staying clear. A hell of a lot of radiation out there. Guess it's coming from the Astraea. Correct. The Astraea's last time jump ruptured a generator, diffusing radiation throughout the region. That's the radiation darkness. Hazard identified. An active warhead from the Astraea. Once your grid projector is installed, removal of dangerous objects like this will be possible. Until then, maintaining a prudent distance is advisable. Grip projector installed. To use your grip projector, simply point at a target. Activate the projector and direct it with your hand. Any sufficiently small piece of debris would be ideal to experiment on. Impressive work, Juno. Apollo, will I be able to access the fuel cells now? I believe so. Good. Heading to the drive bay. Shields at 95%. Shields at 95%. Shields at 95%. Shields at 95%. to salvage the Astraea. The odds of my ship's components being compatible with yours seems unlikely. It wasn't the hardware I was after. Your ship was the original source of the infestation. I had hoped to find an undetonated biomass torpedo amongst the wreckage. Use it to develop a cure for all. Yes. I understand, Doctor. Considering my current directives, I will provide any useful data that may help in your research. Better late than never, I suppose. Shields at 95%. More cis, Jack. No tentacles, though. It must be an unevolved specimen from our original time. 
Nevertheless, still quite deadly, as doubtless you recall. Good find, Jack. There's a bit of data in there we can apply toward developing a cure for the biomass. Shields at 95%. There was some biomass research data in there. Just a small amount, but every bit helps with the cure. How's it looking out there, Jack? Manageable. How are your preparations coming? You know that biomass container you grabbed? Got it rooted through the ship's fuel line. I'm not sure if I should be proud of the accomplishment, or just terrified. I'm sure Dr. Harlan understands the risk we're taking. I do. A mix of pride and terror is the appropriate reaction. Perhaps it would be wise to keep a healthy distance from the biomass container. Yeah. Good call. I'm coming up on the drive bay now. Warheads nearby, Jack. Please be mindful of their extreme radiation levels. You won't be able to handle them directly, Jack. Maybe your new tool could help. Shields at 95%. percent.
Warheads removed. Entry into the drive bay is now clear. Copy that. Standing by. Now heading for the fuel cells. Great. We'll keep a working cargo drone on standby. Just look for a good fuel cell and we'll handle the rest. Roger that. Thank you. 